Hi everyone, thank you for joining me in this video blog. My name is Jonathan Basla, and I'm a psychotherapist at My Therapy NYC. Today, I will explore shame in queer individuals, specifically living authentically in the LGBTQ community and how to move past gay shame. For some, gay shame may seem like a term for only queer cisgender men. However, gay shame can refer to any feelings around being less than, unworthy, or inferior due to your sexuality or gender identity. So what is shame? Often, we can confuse shame with guilt. Boiled down to the most basic distinction, guilt feels like I did something bad, and shame feels like I am bad. We can make mistakes and still feel like we're a good person, while shame feels like a negative evaluation of our self-worth. Internalized shame is correlated to higher levels of depression, anxiety, suicidality, and substance abuse, which can further limit the ability to live to the fullest. Although shame can be overwhelming at times, it is normal to experience shame and actually uncovers our empathy and ability to connect with others. That vulnerability is a sign of strength. As a member of the LGBTQ community, we are raised in a society where the baseline is cis-normativity and heteronormativity. We have gender reveal parties for unborn babies where the only option is boy or girl. I can imagine this may be uncomfortable for someone who is gender non-conforming to be present at an event that celebrates a very binary and limiting view of gender. Similarly, once a baby grows up, we begin asking young children if they have a boyfriend or a girlfriend assuming that they are attracted to the opposite sex. We all discover our identities at different ages, but questions like these can create doubt and worry that we are different than what adults expect us to be, eliciting that dreaded should. Depending on where we call home, LGBTQ individuals may be in a constant game of hide and seek, hiding from potential judgment, danger, or any threat while also seeking safety, community, and acceptance for your authentic self. Even though queer culture is more mainstream and accepted today, the uncertainty may still exist when entering new situations, when meeting new people, or even walking down the street. Can I wear this outfit unabashedly? Can I express my gender any way I choose to? Having to scan your surroundings to assess safety can increase anxiety and limit the ability to live authentically. So how do we break the cycle of shame in the LGBTQ community? Although a process, it starts with unlearning the hurt and pain from incidents from the past. As children, if certain mannerisms, wardrobe choices, or expressions of gender were criticized, this fear of judgment may limit individuals from fully being themselves. For too long, gender and sexuality have placed people into boxes and binaries, which has limited the possibilities for some to realize their truth. This history of being told, no, that's not for you when a boy plays with dolls or when a young girl wants a shorter haircut can impact us greatly. Hearing no repeatedly for things that align with our inner selves, the person only we can know, can become ingrained inside us making us believe these parts are unacceptable and unlovable. It can be exhausting trying to live for other people's comfort. For example, if you were raised in a religious household that held beliefs like gay people are unnatural or will go to hell, it may be more challenging to see yourself as valid. Bullying, harassment, or invalidation of one's identity can also be difficult to erase or repair, yet these external moments do not define you. Your light, your individuality, and your inherent worth cannot be defined by anyone but yourself. Finding the freedom and LGBTQ empowerment to be the true you may not be a linear journey. You may have to ask yourself some difficult questions like, do you love yourself? Are you afraid of rejection? Are you proud of who you are? Moving past gay shame is an act of bravery and resilience. It is recognizing all that you have overcome and to look in the mirror and say, I'm still standing despite those doubts or fears. 
once you move past self-criticism and begin to devalue others' opinions that may contrast with your own vision of yourself, you can start the process of living authentically and embracing more self-compassion. When shame is recognized and confronted from its origin, you may find relief in diminishing its power, which can hold you back from your truth. Brene Brown states that shame needs three things to grow, secrecy, silence, and judgment. Merely acknowledging the shame that exists is the first step to overcoming it. Recognizing the core emotions that arise when we feel ashamed can alleviate its power, whether it is anger or fear or sadness. You are who you are supposed to be and nothing anyone says or does can erase that. Surrounding yourself with people, a chosen family who lift you up and accept you for who you are and want to be can empower you to let go of shame. Therapy may be an option for you if you would like support in overcoming gay shame and having a safe space to discover your authentic self. For more information, check out our website, mytherapynyc.com. We have many resources to help manage your mental health. And as an LGBTQ affirming practice, we see you. Comment below to join the conversation on how you overcome gay shame.